The European Union can be proud of what it has achieved in space over the past few decades. They have huge contributions to the ISS consisting of a number of modules, primarily the Columbus Laboratory in the US orbital segment, ATV supply ships, launchers, software, and 8 billion euros. Besides that, ESA also plays a vital role in the James Webb project, the most expensive space telescope of the decade. Not only the provision of the near-spec instrument and the optical system of the MIRI instrument, but both the launch vehicle as well as the launch site for Webb are also part of the ESA's contribution to the mission. In addition, ESA and member states also make exceptional contributions to robotic space exploration. Regardless of these achievements, European space is still underrated. As a result, after decades of reliance on Russia, NASA, and SpaceX, Europe now wants to reassert itself as a global leader in space exploration. That's why Europe wants to build its own spacecraft. Notably, they are planning to create their own version of Crew Dragon and Falcon 9. In other words, Europe is building its own SpaceX. But what will the space vehicles from Europe look like? And will they be able to beat SpaceX? All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. This European startup wants to develop a new private alternative to SpaceX's Dragon capsule. Founded by three former employees of European aerospace company Airbus, including Helen Huby, former VP of the European Service Module, or ESM, Arter Koop, former ESM Propulsion Subsystem Lead, John Rejnevold, former Deputy Lead Systems Engineer, along with Sebastian Reichstadt and Pierre Vinay, the exploration company is developing a reusable, refuelable orbital vehicle like SpaceX's Dragon capsule. But why the Dragon specifically? Well, first off, Dragon is designed as a class of partially reusable spacecraft, similar to the development direction of the exploration company. Another reason is that this medium has created countless respectable achievements. Its primary role is to transport crews to and from the ISS under NASA's commercial crew program, succeeding in crew transportation and orbital capabilities of the space shuttle, which retired from service in 2011. As of 2022, Crew Dragon is the only U.S. human-rated orbital transport spacecraft, the only reusable orbital crewed spacecraft, and the only reusable orbital cargo spacecraft currently in operation. And although the Boeing Starliner is also capable of doing similar things, they have not proven so. Therefore, SpaceX's Dragon is still the best choice. According to Hubie, there is no close European competitor, and therein lies the opportunity for a European startup to keep up on the international stage. The exploration company has raised around 11.5 million euros, which amounts to 11.6 million dollars, including a 5.3 million euro seed round led by Promus Ventures, with participation from V Squared and Cherry Ventures. Its workforce has grown to around 30 people. The startup is moving fast. It's planning on flying a demonstrator on an Ariane 6 rocket in October, and the speed is by design. While Hubie stressed that she learned everything she knows at Airbus, she ran up against what has now become almost a meme in the startup world, a desire to move fast and be risk-taking in a corporate environment that may not welcome either of those things. It was rational, given the nature of my project, she said. It wouldn't have been the right choice to stay at Airbus because it was just not the right setup for it to grow properly. While such a trend might be common in the United States, Hubie added that the exploration company is unique in that nearly everyone in management spent the bulk of their careers in large corporations. What you typically see in Europe is people that just graduated creating a company, she explained. I think we are the first where the majority of the co-founders are coming from a corporation. The exploration company will be launching Bikini, a re-entry demonstrator of their orbital vehicle this year, followed in 2024 by the first functional prototype. The 2024 mission is around 80% pre-booked with customer payloads. The bookings are both letters of intent or memorandums of understanding, so no customer has yet to pay a deposit and the agreements are not binding. Hubie said the company is in talks with some customers to transfer some of these agreements to signed contracts with down payments by October. In 2026, the company intends to launch the maiden flight of its proper orbital vehicle, named Nyx after the Greek goddess of the night. 
Like the Orion spacecraft, Nix will be composed of two components, the surface module and the capsule. It'll be capable of carrying up to 4,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit for a maximum six-month mission. The capsule will be reusable, and the surface module could also be reusable depending on the mission. The idea, Hubie said, is to eventually be able to refuel the surface module using propellant made in space with space resources, or often referred to as in-space resource utilization. The exploration company is casting its net widely, so Nix is designed to be launcher agnostic. This October, the Bikini Demonstrator will fly aboard an Ariane 6 rocket out of French Guiana, while the first full-scale prototype will fly with SpaceX. Hubie pointed to Gateway, NASA's plan to build an orbiting station around the moon as one possible use case. Nix could provide last-mile delivery to the lunar surface, refuel on the moon, and go back to Gateway. She also referred to the myriad private space station plans that have cropped up from Orbital Reef to Stargate that will require spacecraft capable of transporting goods and people to and from the Earth. Notably, the company was one of 10 startups selected to be part of Amazon Web Services 2022 AWS Space Accelerator, and has referred to Orbital Reef as a partner. Later down the line, the exploration company also wants to develop a human-rated version of Nix, much like how there is a cargo and crewed SpaceX Dragon capsule. The company plans on opening a U.S. subsidiary next year with an eye on gaining the benefits of a relationship with NASA. We've not yet built this kind of cooperation with NASA, and I've noticed already they will be open to that, Hubie said. But of course, when you're building the European version of the Crew Dragon, there has to be a European version of the Falcon 9. Ariane Group, a space company, recently secured funding to develop Europe's first reusable and eco-friendly launchers in a bid to compete with the likes of Elon Musk's SpaceX, which pioneered the technology. The group, best known for making the heavy lift Ariane 5 and the future Ariane 6, said it had been selected to conduct the project, which will be funded by the European Commission as part of the Horizon Europe program, designed to encourage and accelerate innovation on the continent. Ariane Group will be heading the SALTO, or Reusable Strategic Space Launcher Technologies and Operations, and Enlighten, European Initiative for Low-Cost Innovative and Green High Thrust Engine. Engine projects. Funding for the two projects will total 56.4 million euros, illustrating the willingness of the European Commission to influence the future of European launcher strategy in coordination with the ESA. Both of them should be operational by 2026. In short, if all goes according to plan, Europe will have its own SpaceX soon. But don't forget that an original is always worth more than a copy. Tell that to China. Oh, hush. And with that, my time is up. I want to take this time to thank you for watching. And if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.